Hi everybody. I'd like to introduce this instrument to you. It's the Ragamakantar version 14B. Uh, I completed it in 2014 and uh, used it as my main concert instrument for, for about a year or so. And then uh, took it to India and in Orissa. I was in Orissa, Bhubaneswar for a month or so and the humidity there just somehow uh, destroyed the, the thin soundboard. The soundboard's very thin. Indian instruments don't have this kind of thin soundboards like European and you know European instruments. And I think part of the reason why is that the, the climate in India, one of the reasons, you know, is the climate in India just doesn't like these thin soundboards. <clears throat> so the soundboard uh, was destroyed and I replaced I replaced it. So it's got a brand new soundboard. Um, what to say about this instrument? It's uh, it's a rag Makantar. Those uh, not yet familiar with Rag Makantar, again, this is 14, version 14B. And by the way, I'm making this video rather quickly. I'm a little bit busy at the moment, so I didn't have time to set up the, the really nice professional microphone that I normally use when I make videos. So this is just the microphone from the video camera. So if it sounds a bit thin and tinny, that's, that's why. So anyways, Rag Makantar is a, is a hybrid instrument that I've been developing for a long time now. And uh, basically the idea is to combine an oud with a sorod, or something like a sorod. The oud comes up sounding quite a bit like, like an oud, and the sorod, of course, um, is going to sound less like a sorod than it's going to sound like an oud. Now the reason why that is, is because um, what I found was that uh, in, in all, like every version, this is a 14B, 14B, there are 14 versions, this is the last version, or is there a 15 yet? I can't remember. Um, basically, this is the last version. Now, earlier versions, um, usually what was suffering was the oud neck, okay, in early versions, because nylon strings, as opposed to steel strings. Nylon strings have less tension and less kind of power. So when you combine a nylon string instrument with a steel string instrument, usually the steel string instrument is what's going to sound stronger and, and better and more powerful. Okay. So I had this, this experience many times with previous versions. So what I find, the way I finally resolved that was to just think logically what in what situation does an oud sound best? Like an oud type instrument. An oud sounds best when it has an oud's body, right? <laughs> so it's obvious, right? So if you want, if you're making a hybrid instrument and the oud is always coming out sounding weak, then you have to do everything in your power to, to, to strengthen the, the characteristic of an oud. So it just seems logical to me to, to, to use an oud's body. Okay? Now then, the question thereafter was, would a sorod, would a sorod strings sound good on an oud's body? Right? So I, I tried that by putting sorod strings on, on, on an oud. And they sounded good, you know? So, so there you go. So I thought, okay, so I can boost, I can accentuate the, the tone of the oud neck and avoid that repeated um, disappointment that I that I had in which the oud always suffered and the sorod sounded great. You know, all the previous Ragma, all the Ragma Kantars before version 9. Okay, so what I'm describing to you now is the process in which I came up with version 9 of the Ragma Kantar. Okay, now version 14 is basically the same thing as version 9, except it's a little bit shorter scale is a little bit shorter. Version 9 uses the Arab oud length, which is 61 and a half centimeters of the string length, tuned a little bit lower. That's the Arab oud uh, stringing configuration. Now, the Turkish string length is 58 and a half centimeters and slightly higher tuning. So, so this is basically the same thing as version 9, 
except it uses the, the Turkish oud length, okay, for the oud, and it's tuned slightly higher. So version 9 was the first version of the Rock and Comptar that really sounded great in, on both necks, okay, on both necks, in all registers, okay. And that was quite a happy moment for me when, when, when that instrument came to life, version 9. That was in 2009, actually. No, 2011 was when I completed that. Um, and the tuning of version 9 was generally in B-flat tuning. So although I was extremely happy with the sound and the tone of version 9, it was rather inconvenient. It's a rather inconvenient instrument to use in collaborations with other Western musicians. Other musicians be B-flat. I guess unless you're playing with a saxophone player. You know, B-flat is very uh, uncommon. Whereas this is tuned in B. B and E. You know, B and, and the relative key is E. So E is a very, you know, B is, is, is also not that common, but E is, is quite common, so you're going to that's, 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 uh, E, okay, and you can adjust the tune, the tuning of the, I mean, basically this rose in, uh, in B also, but if you change the tuning slightly, you can also t tune it in, you know, sa, 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 ma, you can do a ma-based tuning, which is E. So E is a quite a common key for collaborating. So this instrument, the version 14, this version 14, is uh, more convenient for collaborating with other, other musicians. Now it's shorter and it's, it's, um, it's got a shorter length and, and quite convenient for, like Turkish style playing uses a lot of like hammer-ons and all this kind of stuff, which is why, part of the, I think, part of the reason why the Turkish Scale length is shorter, you know, because you this kind of. Whereas Arabic playing is more this kind of stuff. They're not doing as an intricate stuff with this hand. Um, so yeah, so it's very easy to play instrument. It's very short and and uh, and, and, and short scale, and, and the necks are very thin. Um, so what else to say about it? Uh, that's that's about it, I guess. Um, this is Rock and Comptor version 14B. Um, and I'm just about to send it off to um, to a musician in, uh, I believe, in New York. So this is just sort of a, since this instrument has been very, this exact instrument has been very dear to me. I've used it for a lot of concerts, so it's kind of like a saying goodbye. To, I revarnished, I took all the strings off and I revarnished it completely. And uh, replaned, reflattened the, the fingerboards, put a new bridge on, and just set it up. It's just completed, it's about an hour ago. So it's got a completely brand new setup. Um, and it sounded really good already. So I hope you like it. I'm just going to play a little bit to give you a taste of the sound of this instrument. So. <laughs>
So don't let that disturb you. <laughs> there. 